Hi, I'm Nick, and I hate mushrooms. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki, and I love mushrooms. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emmeline, and I'm indifferent to mushrooms. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I am a mushroom. Oh, the mushroom. What an amazing future of Foxcroft Farm. Part of the fungi kingdom, they can either be a toxic forest treat or a delectable pizza topping. Mushrooms normally grow in the dark, damp areas like this forest, as you can see, we're standing in. M Mushrooms are decomposers, which means that they, they eat and metabolize dead plant matter and other natural things. You know, like these branches, like these leaves, mushroom food. And so, since we all love mushrooms so much, we decided that we wanted to figure out where mushrooms love growing the most. On these trees, just kidding. On these fallen trees, or in the soil. Find out what we found. For our field ecology project, we ventured into the forest of Foxcroft Farm to conduct serious scientific research. We decided to see whether mushrooms grew more on the ground or on the trees. We looked at seven different plots that were in a dark, damp area and counted the amount of mushrooms on each plot in each week. We hypothesized that there would be more mushroom growth on the dead trees because they provide more nutrients. We included the dead mushrooms in our counts, as this yes. indicates mushroom growth at some point. Dead. When we started looking for all of the mushrooms, we ran into a problem where we realized that majority of the mushrooms around this time are dead. And because of that, we were not able to accurately assess what mushrooms were what. Some of them were a little bit obvious, but others a little bit more concerning. But the big thing that we were able to notice were that there were a lot more single mushrooms on the ground than there were on the dead trees. Like in this one, when it's on the tree, there's colonies of them. And that was something that we contrably saw. So right here, it's very, very dead because it's very dry. I was able to easily pull it out of the ground so it's part of it came off. And we can't really correctly identify exactly what it is, but given all of this stuff right here, that's just dried up polypore. So I would clarify this as a polypore. You can see if it's all dried here at the stump. Usually, if you were to pull out of the ground, it'd kind of tear, but this one just cleanly came off. So right now we're in dry old mushroom season. As you can see, we are thoroughly searching this plot of land for any fungal growth. And after a few minutes of searching, as you can see, we found one mushroom, one entire mushroom. Right here, there's like a ball thing on this branch. Nikki thinks it's a common puffball, but we don't know because we're not mushroom experts. But it looks like it could be a mushroom, so we're counting it. After collecting all the data, we produced a graph that shows that there's more growth on mushrooms on of mushrooms on ground compared to tree. A big difference that we found is there are more single growth mushrooms on the ground versus colonies of mushrooms on the dead tree branches. This can be attributed to the types of mushrooms that prefer to grow on the different substrates. Given our data, this aligns strongly with our research. The research of Hoa et al. 2015 shows that a certain concentration of sugars and substrates, like the type of material it grows on, affects the growth of the mushroom. But this research focused on oyster mushroom species. Because of this, we can extrapolate that certain species of mushrooms prefer the ground as their substrate, and those species tend to grow as a singular unit. Conversely, certain other species will prefer dead trees as their substrates, and we noted that they grow on colonies on decomposing logs. The concentration of mushrooms on either substrate will depend on the surrounding regions and substrates available.